So for an example of the first uh, process, if you know the potential, how to get the electric field. This is a typical example that you have in the course, a typical category of problems. This is a, an example from the textbook. They tell you that the potential is given as a function of x and y in this way. If you know the potential in this functional form, the required is find the magnitude of the electric field at a particular point in space. So this is a very simple example and we're going to be able to solve this example in a while. In this pro kind of problem, we didn't mention where how the potential was obtained. We don't care in this part how it was obtained. All we care about is that when you know the potential, how do you get the electric field? That's what we're going to focus on in this part. And later on, as I mentioned, we're going to learn how to calculate the potential from the charge distribution. So if you go to any point in space, the electric field vector consists of an X component, EXP at point P, EYP, EZP. It has three components, X, Y, and Z components. So if I want to get the electric field at a point in space, I need to get EX, I need to get EY, I need to get EZ. And so I'm going to make as the fundamental definition for this part of the chapter, this how to get EX, how to get EY, and how to get EZ from the potential. So to get EX, you take negative and partial derivative of the potential with respect to X. EY, you get minus partial V by partial Y. EZ, you get minus partial V by partial Z. This is a definition. And we're going to see in a while, when you use this definition, when you start with this definition, how, what the consequences will be. So we'll do this in detail. So if you ask at this point, well, why the negative sign? And why this particular definition, uh, partial V by partial X? This, these are good questions to ask, it's fine. The answer is that we're taking this as our definition and as our starting point. And let's just see what the consequences are and if we'll be able to do what we want to do. Remember what we want to do. We want to be able to find an easier way to get the electric field rather than starting with, the, with Coulomb's law. So are we going to be able, based on this definition, relationship between electric field and potential, to find a way to get the potential from the charge distribution or not? We will be able to. So this is going to be our starting definition and let's see how we can proceed. So we just mentioned that by definition, EX is minus partial V by partial X. So what does that mean? If you want to get the, the, the X component of electric field at point A, you need to know how the potential changes in the vicinity of point A as you go in the X direction. Remember the definition of the partial derivative. So it's not enough to know what the potential is at point A only. No, you need to know how the potential changes as you go along the X direction. We know before how to get partial derivative. We've done examples on this. So doing this partial derivative is not difficult. It's pretty easy. Once you know V, you can very easily get EX through this definition. To get EY, you get minus partial V by partial Y. So you need to know how does the potential change when you go in the Y direction. you get minus partial V by partial Z. You need to know how the potential changes in the Z direction. And remember, the, any function uh, of, of X, Y, and Z, it doesn't have to change the same way when you go in the Z or in the Y or in the X. It could have different way of changing in different directions. So EX won't turn out to be the same as EY, won't turn out to be the same as EZ in general. So to summarize, this is our fundamental starting point for the chapter that we're going to define the electric field vector at a point in space. It's minus partial V by partial X, I minus partial V by partial Y, J minus partial V by partial Z, K. And these derivatives have to be evaluated at the point P that you want to find the electric field. Because obviously, if you calculate partial V by partial X over here, you're going to get a different value. So you need to see, where do I want to find the electric field? I want to find the electric field at this point. So you need to take the partial derivative at that point. So again, 
If we get back to the example we had, this is the example. It's given the potential as a function of position. Can you use, this is, this is something you have to do now as an, as an exercise. Can you start with this given value of potential and get the magnitude of the electric field at the point three meters for x coordinate and two meter y coordinate? Try and do it on your own.